Welcome to Dancing Water. I'm Susan. Thank you for being here. Today's Dancing Water practice is restorative yoga, a nesting practice with all the things. I'm very excited to be offering this for you today. It's been a long week for me, and uh, this is just the kind of practice that I need to regain my own footing and my own sense of myself. So let's gather some props. We're focusing on the arms and the legs today. So we're gonna have lots of things that I want you to gather from around your space. So um, first of all, three pillows. What, we, what, um, what I've got here you can see is three firm pillows that I have stacked. And you can see that one of them is a little bit bigger than, than the others which gives me a little bit of an incline kind of situation. So create something like that for you. Depending on your body, you may even want another pillow or you may want fewer. So have a couple around so that you can adjust. And then two bath towels. We're gonna do our towel log. So uh, let's fold these together. Taking your towel folding it in half. You can do it either long ways or short ways, and then make a long rectangle. And then start at the end with all the edges and roll it as tightly as you can into a log, like that, okay? So we're gonna do that with both of the towels. And you want to take, you want to be a little precise with this. You want to make it as even as you can so that the roll is nice and smooth and feels supportive for your legs and for your body. Then you'd like, you need a blanket, a small blanket folded in a long rectangle. And then, uh, 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 some kind of eye covering. I like to use a small uh, hand towel that I can also use as a pillow, but you could also use a t-shirt or a scarf or anything that you could um, either bunch up under your head and neck and or put over your eyes. All right, so let's begin. Let's let ourselves arrive. I'm going to, I think I'm going to just sit on one of my towel logs, get my hips a little bit higher than my knees, and I'm just crossing my legs very easily here. If this doesn't feel comfortable to you, find a seated position that does feel good. You're welcome to do this in a chair if that feels better. Oh, which reminds me, at the end of the practice, we will use either a wall, or in my case, a bookcase, or if you don't have that, you can also use a chair. So, another prop. Told you, all the things today. Okay, so finding yourself in a seated position. Let yourself arrive. Imagine your body like an hourglass, all the sand of thought just pouring down into your body. And I'm going to offer you a hand position that I learned from one of my teachers. Her name is Jane Clapp. And she is uh, an amazing body worker, uh, specialist in trauma. And we happen to be, I happen to be taking a course in anti-racism that she is helping facilitate. And I am delighted to be connected with her. So I'm gonna call these Jane Clapp hands. So take one soft palm to your forehead, one to the back of your neck, as if you were supporting both parts of your brain, your lizard brain at the back and your prefrontal cortex at the front. Let your hands be soft and supportive, breathing easy in and out through your nose, giving some soothing to your lizard brain 
and some support to your prefrontal cortex. For me, when I do this, it is a way of settling down, a way of offering myself support. Take one more deep breath with your hands here, and then release them down to your sides. Take a breath and lift your chest, lift your eyes. And then round down. So one of the things Jane says is that part of our work is to discern when to stay in discomfort and awkwardness. Inhale, lift your heart. And when to soothe yourself out. So sometimes we can rush to soothing, which avoids the possibility of transformational change. So just sense that for yourself. And then let's take the, the, the Jane clap hands on the other side, the other palm to the forehead, to the prefrontal cortex, the other hand to the back of your neck, giving yourself support, reassurance, soothing, Letting your eyes relax, and your jaw relax, your tongue soft in the base of your mouth. Mm. Then just let your hands come down, just rolling your shoulders a little bit, feeling your neck. Feeling the connection between your arms and your neck and your legs and your hips. All right, so we're going to take our first pose here and I call it Vitruvian Yogi. So we've got our inclined stack of pillows and we have our two towel logs that we'll take here at the end of the space on angles. So the Vitruvian man, Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of the man in a circle. And so imagine Vitruvian yogis, that your body is in the circle. So the towels are right under your knees. And then very gently just roll yourself back onto your incline. And adjust this so it feels supportive. So you want to feel the length of your spine supported. And then take your blanket that's in this long rectangle and drape it over your torso. So it goes all the way from your, your collarbones, your, your, your clavicle bones, all the way down past your genitalia. So you want to feel this sense of weight and warmth and protection, right? So this is a pretty vulnerable position with this extension of arms and legs. So giving yourself the reassurance of the support and weight over top. And then your arms are out of the T. And take a breath in Inhale your arms up overhead, and then exhale, float them down like wings. Inhale, float. Exhale, down. You can breathe in and out through your nose, or in through your nose and out through your mouth. Little sigh. Check out your neck here. So the way I've adjusted my pillows, it feels okay, but you may want to put something, your eye covering underneath your head. And then the next time you come down, check it out with your body. See if you want to keep moving and breathing your arms, or if you just want to pause 
and let them rest out, either out at a T or with your arms down at your sides. It depends on how it feels in your shoulders. Mm. So I sometimes describe restorative yoga as the sensation of having run across the airport to make it to your plane and sitting down in your seat Oh, and you made it. And now you have time to relax. You ever feel like that? That your day feels like a rush and tumble. It's full of stress. And when you carve out some time for yourself, for your body, it's a time when your body, when your breath can come back to relaxation. Resetting your body. <sighs> and as the Jane Clapp hands remind us, it's also a way of resetting your brain and your nervous system. Notice the sensation in your upper arms and your upper legs. These longest bones of your body, see if you can let them sink down a little more. Bones in your lower arms and your lower legs. There are two bones in both of these limbs. And as you breathe in, imagine some space between the two bones in your lower legs and your lower arms. Oh, let your breath do whatever it likes. If at any time you want to introduce the, the movement of your arms again, Coordinating it with your breath, that's totally fine. And just now take a couple of breaths, see if you can soften the joints of your shoulders and your hips. And then very gently, start with your feet, place your feet onto the towels, and then gently roll yourself to one side. Drop your top palm into the floor and push yourself up. And then very gently just set aside both your blanket and one of your towel logs. And then take the other towel log and put it near the very end of your space. This is going to be for your ankle joints eventually. For now, slowly let yourself come to all fours over your tower, tower of pillows. So feel your shoulders right under your, your right, your hands right under your shoulders and your knees right under your hips and just very gently Use your arms and legs to support you as you move your spine in any way that feels good. You can cat-cow this here, or you can just move in a more intuitive way, just using the support of your legs and arms to create any movement that feels good. And then extend, in my case, I'm gonna extend my right leg back and move my left knee forward. This is a supported pigeon pose. 
So you want to feel lots of support under your torso. And then turn your head, just let your cheek rest in the, on the same side that your knee is bent. If you're wearing earrings, you may want to slip the earrings off just so that you can feel some ease in your cheek, if that feels good. And then take the Jane Clap hands. So your right hand, the hand that's on the side of your long leg, is at the back of your neck, your lizard brain. And then your front hand, your hand on the bent knee side, is with the heel of your hand at your third eye and the fingers splayed over your skull. So breathe into these supportive hands and arms that are here holding you. Imagine your palms connected to each other through your brain. Energetically sending some ease, some reassurance, I've got you, I'm right here. Oh. Notice the asymmetry of the pose, noticing how you feel in your right and left hip and your right and left sacrum at the back of your body. Feel your belly supported. See if you can feel your heartbeat and where you feel it. Can you feel your heartbeat in your arms or your legs? Then very easy, very gently, release your hands. Let them rest down. And now check this out. You're going to lift up your long leg and extend your bent leg and cross it underneath what was the long leg. So that now the leg that was bent is now long and resting on the top of the towel. So the top of your once bent leg is now resting on top of the towel. A long cross of the legs. And here, take your hands, your elbows in front of your body, and take your head in your hands so that your thumbs are right at the top of your ears. So it's almost as if You've just gotten some bad news and you're just like, oh no, I'm so overwhelmed. But instead of that, it's more of a feeling of, I've got you, I'm supporting you. So the heavy weight of your head being held by your hands. And you can very gently rock your head side to side using the strength of your hands to move your head. And then find a center point and opening the fronts of your hips as if you could exhale into your hip flexors down into the floor. Hmm. The 
your eyes either close or softly look down. It feels better to me just to close my eyes here. Notice the sensation, the supporting upper arms and the upper legs. And as you breathe, as your rib cage inflates and then softens, notice what happens. Notice the movement that happens in your hips and your shoulders. You're welcome to stay here. If this feels good, just stay here. But if you'd like a little side body stretch, a very gentle side body stretch, notice whichever leg is on top and take that arm, the side of that arm, and reach across your body, making a little bit of a crescent shape. So take your palms so you're so for me, this is my right hand is reaching across to the left. And then I am planting my left palm on top of the right. So just sort of anchoring the right palm with the left. And again, just let your cheek fall to the pillow. And here, breathe a lot into the side of your hip. on both sides, but particularly the long side. Opening the long side waist and the long side ribs. Using the arms to create space in your torso. Notice if you're holding any tension in your shoulders or your biceps. See if you can relax your skin. Relax your muscles. Relax your connective tissue. and relax your bones. Take one more deep breath here. Oh. And then come back, everybody come back with your hands right under your elbows and gently Uncross your legs, and then just for a moment, press back into child's pose. Tapping your forehead down onto the mat. And then come back into all fours, and let's do this on the other side. So taking your body over your, your pillows, and using the support of your arms and legs, Move your spine around. So it may feel a little different than the first time you did this because you've done some movement on one side. So then as you're ready, you're going to take the other leg and bend it. So for me, I'm going to extend my left leg long, resting my ankle on the left side, and then bend my right knee up to the side and looking toward the bent knee. 
And again, taking your Jane clap hand. So on the long leg side, take your hand at your, your low neck, your low skull, supporting your lizard brain. And then take your top hand, your front hand at the bent leg side, with the heel of your hand at third eye, cup your forehead so your little finger and thumb rest at your temples. Fingers lay over your skull and breathe. See if you can let your breath billow out your low back, the space between your shoulders. Let your breath breathe you without trying to make it special or different. Just feel your breath. Feel your hands and arms supporting, reassuring your body that you've got you. I've got you right here. Relaxing the muscles around your eyes and your mouth. Notice any sensation in your lips and the toes, the tips of your toes. And then taking your time as you're ready, lifting your back foot and lengthening your bent leg and crossing your ankle. So your bent leg is now underneath the other leg and there's a long cross of the legs. And again, taking your hands, thumbs just above the tops of your ears, hands holding the weight of your head. So making sure that you are not holding your head up with your neck, but that you are holding your head up with your hands and your arms. And again, a very slow rock side to side. And you may notice that there are some kind of bumpy places in your neck where your head doesn't turn smoothly. That's totally normal and totally fine. You can keep moving your head side to side if that feels good or find a center point to just pause and rest. Let your feet relax. Let the back of your heart blossom open. Let the back of your heart bloom in the space between your shoulders.
Drop the weight of your head into the support of your hands and arms. Drop the weight of your hips. Drop the weight of your bones, particularly the bones of your legs and upper arms. And again, you're welcome to stay here if this feels good. But if you'd like to, notice the leg that's on top. Whichever side that is, let that arm reach across your body in a crescent moon shape. And then place the other palm on top. So both palms are down. One's down onto the mat. The other is down on top of the back of the other hand. like the sail of a sailboat. Let your breath open up the ribs on the long side of your body. Notice any holding or gripping that can land anywhere. It often lands in my shoulders and my jaw, but where is it for you? Where do you tend to hold on? Feel the space at your waist. Feel your low back. See if you can melt the soles of your feet softening the muscles in the arches of your feet, your heels, the balls of your feet, the tips of your toes. Take one or two more breaths here. And whether or not you're in the crescent, come back up, hands under elbows, uncross your legs, and bring yourself all the way back slowly, just briefly into child's pose. Hmm. Now we're gonna transition slowly. So slowly bring yourself up. We're gonna just set up our last posture together. So I'm going to do this against my book, my bookshelf, or you can use a wall. You can also use a chair and put your feet at 90 degrees. But I'm gonna offer a, a, a blanket wrap and this will work better against a wall or a chair as opposed to just letting your, your legs float up. Um, so choose whatever works best for you. Um, so what we want to do is whatever, wherever you are, if they're against your chair or the wall, you want to have some support and softness for your sacrum, for the bony part of your lower back. So I'm going to put my towel log and a pillow 
like this. So that when I put my hips against the wall, my hips will be higher than my chest. And then I'm going to use this second pillow for my head, um, just because I know that for my body, I'll need a little support for my head. And I'm also going to use an eye covering. So you can have that handy. Instead of this, you could also use a towel. Um, whatever works for you. And then have your blanket handy, but I'm going to show you the legs first. So snug your one side of your hip up against either the base of your chair or the wall. So feel the sensation of this connection here, and then gently rotate your body So it may take a little wiggling, a little adjusting, as best you can putting your sits bones up against the wall or the base of the chair. And then check out your head. Sure enough, it works best for me if I have a little support under my head. So just feeling this sensation of your sacrum lifted and your sit bones close to the, the chair or the wall. So you're welcome just to stay here, but for me, I find it really comforting to do a wrap of the legs. So what I'm going to suggest is to take a corner of your blanket and, and wrap it around the tops of your, or the bottoms of your feet. So just get that. So there's, there's a lot, there's plenty of blanket around your feet. And so that should mean you have another corner that's up by your chest. And then take the blanket and wrap it, tuck it around your legs. It's sort of like a ghost blanket. Yeah, and then, so, so roughly speaking, your whole body is covered, but what, what you really want to feel is a little support around your legs, like a cocoon around your legs. And then arms can rest at your sides, either palms up or palms down, or they can rest on your body. I like the feeling of hands resting on the body. And then... You can cover your eyes with your t-shirt or your scarf. Block out light and give your, your eyes a little, just like the blanket is on your body, it's a little support from above. So give yourself some time to really find what works best. You may fidget around and just do keep asking yourself, how could I be more comfortable? And at some point your body will tell you, your body will say, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. See if you can relax the joints of your hips. Feel the femur bones dropping down into the hip socket. Whether you're on a chair at 90 degrees or you're up the wall. Notice if you have any tension or holding in your belly. See if you can breathe and soften there. Smooth the muscles in your forehead. Eye covering can really help with that. Mm. 
And sometimes you may notice little pockets of tension gather, or maybe they were there all along and you just notice them. That happens, it's totally natural, totally fine. Just notice them and very often just paying attention to them allows them to shift. You feel any tension at the back of your neck. You can take your thumbs to the base of your skull and splay your fingers around the back of your head, moving your head and gently lifting your head up and then placing it back down, creating more length at the back of your neck, letting your chin drop. Relax your ears, soften into any sounds that you hear in your space. My voice, but also sounds in the room, or outside the room, in your body and around your body. Oh. Notice the backs of your knees, whether you're on a chair or against the wall, just notice how they're oriented, and what they feel like. Similarly, notice the insides of your elbows, whatever position they're in. You don't have to change them. They don't have to do anything differently. Just notice how they feel. Imagine that your breath is coming through all of your skin. Breathing in the bottoms of your feet, the skin on your legs, and arms, the soles of your hands, neck and throat. Breathing in through your back and your belly and your chest and your face. This is a position that you can stay in for as long as you like. 
you're welcome to pause the recording or just stay here as the recording plays out and close whenever you're ready. And whenever you're ready, slowly let your heels, if they're on the wall, slide down. And if your legs are on a chair, gently draw your feet toward you and let your femur bones come close to your chest. Just pause here for a moment. Notice the sensation in your low back, the connection between your legs and your hips. And then very gently let yourself pour over to one side and pause there. Just pausing. And just notice that sensation of stopping. No need to hurry to the next thing. Then as you're ready, using your top hand, push up. And bring yourself to a seat. It's possible that your body temperature may have gone down through the course of the practice. It's very normal for that to happen. If that's the case, you may want to wrap a blanket around you. And if you have a cup of tea or some water, just pausing and remembering that being with groundlessness takes skill. Our brains may want to scramble quickly to find solidity, to find relief. And the skill is to know when to stay in the discomfort, when to stay in the awkwardness that we know will lead to transformation and change. And when we need to pause, when we need to support ourselves, when we need to stop. So taking a moment, smelling this moment, and taking a sip. hydrating your body and this practice, remembering that this practice that we do together is what allows us to move through the world with skill and courage, facing the constant sense of being tossed out of the nest, the groundlessness that is the nature of human life. So, Thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel, for reaching out, connecting with me in the comments, or at my blog at focuspocusnow.com, or my website, susanmcculley.com, where you can sign up for my newsletter and hear about all the evolving practices that will be coming out of Dancing Water in the coming days, weeks, months, who knows how long. Thank you, friends. Have a wonderful day. May you be well and happy. Take care. Mwah.